Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another session of uh, a Q&A with Age in Spain. Uh, I'm Mark Garcia, the project assistant and uh, information specialist for Age in Spain, as you could say. And yep, we're here today to discuss a bit uh, questions that uh, you may have about the residency process, uh, your experiences, doubts that you may have, and I will also share with you uh, some of the latest news regarding the residency process, as well as access to some other rights in a, in Spain as a UK national, uh, after, especially after the end of 2020, with everything that comes with that. So, um, with further ado, and just uh, making a small uh brief intersection i just would i would like to encourage you to subscribe to our newsletter if you haven't yet um i say just because it's very useful uh this way we can share a lot of the knowledge that we receive uh very fast with uh, everyone that needs to know the answer to some questions people interested on driving license let's say what are the latest updates on that and you can also know about what events might be celebrated in your area so i really encourage uh, if you haven't yet to subscribe to the age in spain's newsletter and yeah this way you will be right on point with everything that we're up to um so now before starting the q a Although I, this will be the main part, I just want to do a brief introduction um, about some of the latest things going on uh, with the residency process, um, with extranjería, etc. How the process has changed um, since it first started officially back in July 6th, 2020. It looks like a lot of time has passed since then, but uh, yep. We are by no means done with it yet. Um, so first of all, um, I would like to talk a bit about the main difficulties uh, of applying for residency in 2021 under the scope of the withdrawal agreement. As you probably know, um, the withdrawal agreement in terms of residency rights uh, secures that if someone lived in Spain before the end of 2020, before Brexit was effective, that person was entitled to continue and keep, to continue living in Spain, keep the residency rights in the same way that the person did before uh, Brexit, when the UK was part of the European Union. As you know, uh, a new residency card was created for UK nationals, and an option was given to whether you can continue with your green card or you can exchange your green card for this new tier or if you don't have any residency document you can obtain this new tier directly this was uh, the theory the theory that uh, we'll got and that's what a lot of people did during 2020 however uh, we'll know what happened uh, lack of appointments um, even sometimes in some cities, in others not, but in some cities to get a padron with all the COVID situation, you had to wait for months um, and eventually you got all your documents set already in January 2021, for example, and you had to apply then. In 2021, to apply for residency, you can still do it. That's the declaratory nature of the withdrawal agreement. It means that if you lived in 2020, lawfully and we will go on to that later uh, in this uh, live session but if you lived lawfully you were entitled to that tier card and therefore there shouldn't be any issue however one of the things that we've seen is that people that has to apply for residence in 2021 are facing way more difficulties uh, the process is tougher in many ways um, and for example, one of those is that uh, in order to apply for residency in 2021, you need to prove that since the date that you claim is your start of residency, you complied with all the requirements to apply for the residency back then, which implies, um, first of all, showing that you were living here, um, showing utility bills, phone bills, rental contracts, property deeds, whatever that you have that confirms a continued residency in Spain, but also complying with the health insurance policy 
uh, of Spain, which states that if you plan to live more than 90 days in Spain, you need to have a health insurance policy in place for that time being. We are now seeing that a lot of people ha is facing some issues because while their padron, for example, states that they started living in Spain back in July 2020, their health insurance policy is dated from January 2021 onwards and extranjería is coming and saying, hey, and what were you doing all these months? Um, those are the things that we're currently talking uh, with UK officials as well, with the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, how to deal with these cases. But this is one of the things that you need to be aware if you are thinking of starting your residency process now. Choose the dates of your documents carefully because that will be taken into account. That's one thing. Um, if you haven't started yet the process, um, all the information said before, uh, if you just joined, you can rewatch the video later. So don't worry about that. It will be uh, able for everyone to see once the session is finished. Um, be aware that the process, if you start now, it can take up to four months, five, even six in some regions because of lack of personal and resources in the immigration office. So just a note on that to be aware. And now, uh, without further ado, we let's jump to the to the Q and A, which is the main and the reason of this event happening. I see that already some people is joining the conversation, um, so I'll get to to read some of your comments, guys. See uh, Bantier, you have been my hero, helping my family of six get all our residency. Well, I'm happy of that, See uh, I hope I pronounced it properly. Uh, Jamie Williamson is also joining us. Uh, Mark, unfortunately, I was in the UK when my resolution letter was issued, but due to COVID travel restrictions, I was unable to collect it. The Foreign Office has refused to reissue a new one, so I can't go forward. What can I do? Okay, Jamie, so um, I presume that you got the you had to receive the resolution by paper, right? Uh, you applied not using a digital certificate, but uh, uh, a traditional application. Um, if you can provide us more detail about how did you request the foreign office, um, maybe you can send us a private message or, or fill in the inquiry form. Um, we can revisit your comment later because definitely if you received a favorable resolution, the next step uh, would be to go to the police and request a card. Um, I know that in some regions we cover, for example, in Galicia, the police doesn't require you to present the resolution when applying for, when getting the card, when you already have a favorable one, they tell you, you don't need to present. Um, so I would encourage you to Go, maybe book an appointment with the police uh, while we get this resolution thing sorted out because it is definitely a bummer, right? You got the a positive resolution and then you cannot get the card. So hopefully we can solve that later on. Um, we've received also some questions from people that send them beforehand. Um, so we can go also with some of them. Um, one question says, Hi, we're in process of obtaining residency. We have put our documentation in, but not heard anything with the backlog. Question is, how do we obtain our vaccination? We live in, Tef in Tenerife, age 64 and 62 respectively, and we, see we seem to be in no man's land. Thank you, Mr. Philip Evans. Um, okay, so this question, um, the answer is quite simple. Um, if you're between 64 and 62, you're already within the collective that is getting vaccinated. So what you need to do, whether you're resident or not yet, is to go to your local primary care uh, center, uh, which you will have one. It depends on where, where, where you live. And if you don't know which one you live, you have to go. Usually the, the first thing to do is go to your town hall and ask there because the center depends on whether you are empadronado. Uh, once you go to that center, you need to bring a copy of your empadronamiento as well, a recent one, so less than three 
months old as well as some ID like for example a passport and they will tell you what are the next steps to follow this changes from uh, Comunidad Autónoma to another so I cannot tell you 100% what you have to do but this is the standard process and yes you will be vaccinated so don't worry about it okay Carol Webster comments uh, can you discuss repercussions for visa if you have exemptions on your private health insurance is it impossible to go ahead well Carol if we're talking about visa so therefore you're living in the UK and you're trying to get a visa, for example, let's say a non-lucrative visa, you need to present all these documents beforehand. If there is a document that does not comply with the requirements, they will let you know, hopefully. But in any case, it is extremely important that uh, for stays that are over 180 days or 90 days, anyway, for long stays, the health insurance should be without exen exemptions or copayment. That's the most important thing. Usually, it is better to contact insurance companies that work in Spain because they already have packages uh, that are adapted uh, to this type of client. Uh, um, so, if you don't know to which one go for, um, we're currently collaborating with one that, uh, I mean, as an organization, we really do not have many <laughs> benefits from that, but it's a company that we trust on. And uh, if you send us a, a private inquiry, we can send you the reference and you can then check and decide if that fits your description. But at least in terms of copayment access, this this kind of requirements that insurance uh, fulfills all of them so you would be good to go with that um, the company is called Asisa and we can send you more details if, if you want if you can, you can send us a private inquiry and just refer that we had a conversation here and then we will provide you with information okay Carol um, another question that uh, were sent is um, not sure if I can make it but I hope that someone will be asking about no longer being able to exchange a UK driving license. Okay, can you please clarify that? Those who can complete the license exchange by the 30th of June cannot legally drive? Okay, so this is a question regarding the driving license status, which is another tricky point, um, to be honest, because um, as you may know, uh, UK driving license are no longer valid to drive in Spain. I mean, for now, you still can drive with a UK license, but from the 30th of June onwards, you won't be able any longer. Uh, you will need a Spanish driving license to continue driving after the 30th of June. Um, this situation started, of course, past year, uh, by the last three months of 2020 when uh, there was a new uh, procedure enabled for UK nationals to request an exchange of their UK driving license for a Spanish one. That, that, that procedure, we can call it that way, consisted basically on, first of all, you needed to be a resident and then you had to contact the DGT and request for the exchange. Remember, this was just a request, not, not an appointment to do the, the actual exchange. Um, the aim of this process was that everyone that requested the exchange before 2020 could do so, could proceed to do the actual exchange in 2021 without the need of taking a driving test. Everyone that, for one reason or another, couldn't request the exchange in 2020, mostly because they still didn't have the residency cards uh, and therefore they were not accepted in this process, now finding a situation where, yeah, they can still drive with the driving license, but from the 30th of June, it is over. And if they want to do the actual exchange, they will need to take a test. Um, the update on this situation is that now um, the exchange uh, for uh, UK nationals that requested the exchange can be done up until the 31st of December 2021. So the border is not anymore the 30th of June. But uh, the ugly side of this is that you can still only drive with your UK license until the 30th of June. 
from the 30th of June onwards, sadly, um, the UK license won't be valid and you would be deemed illegal, an illegal driver if you're catched by the police or something. So um, on top of that, there is still no news on people that uh, couldn't request exchange. So as far as we know, for now, you still need to do a driving test if you want to exchange the driving license in 2021 and you didn't do the request uh, when the period was enabled from November till December of past year. So from this side, uh, not a lot of good news. Um, but uh, again, uh, this is a topic that has been uh, discussed continuously that uh, UK officials are really fighting for with uh, the Spanish authorities. So if you subscribe to our newsletter or follow our Facebook page or the Brits in Spain uh, web Facebook page as well, probably you will receive the updates as soon as they go live. Sabera Hassan asks another question. Which is the option next for Huellas in order to obtain your TIA when you make an appointment in the Sede Electronica Cita Previa? Is it el trámite de policía, expedición, tarjeta asociada, blah, 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 uh, or another option for the huellas and then recogida at the end? Okay, uh, so Sabira, uh, to get your fingerprints done, the option is expedición de tarjeta asociada, el acuerdo de retirada, blah, 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 and then to, re to pick up your TIE, the option is recogida de tarjeta de identidad de extranjero. However, since each foreign office works a little bit different from others, uh, whenever you go to get to, do your, to get your fingerprints done, ask them exactly how they want you to proceed with the pickup. Because some of them won't even require uh, a cita previa. Others will. Others will send you an SMS. So you're never quite sure uh, of what, of in which way they will proceed. So. Um, the standard procedure is the one that I told you, recogida, once when you want to pick up the, the card. But anyway, ask them just in case they have another process in place. Another question that was sent to us is, uh, oh, this is one that recently has been picking up uh, a lot of people. Uh, has anyone applied for the Carta de Invitación for UK? friends or family coming to stay in your home how long did it take how much did it cost did you have any problems or have to attend any interviews okay um so recently there's been a lot of uh comments in social media about this carta de invitación what is a carta de invitación a carta de invitación is a document that um, third country visitors need to present to the authorities when crossing the border if they are going to live at a private property, for example, of a family member. If you are a resident in Spain and you want to uh, invite some uh, relatives to stay for a couple of weeks, but they will stay at your home, um, this is the document that some uh, that uh, Spain asks to some countries to present in these kind of situations. The cost of this document is very high. It's around 80 euros if you keep in mind the two tasks that you need to pay, one to generate the, the document and an another one to pick it up. So the document itself is quite costly. And on top of that, uh, you need to present a set of documents um, the, regarding the person that will come to visit you as well as your status in Spain. You might even be asked for an interview, although that's not always mandatory. It depends on the situation. Right now, we're still not recommending anyone to, to use this Carta de Invitación because so far we haven't received conclusive um, reports from the airport uh, officials or from the FCDO. In fact, we don't have anything conclusive. We just know that it is one of the possible documents that you might be asked when coming to Spain and visit some family members in a private property. If you come, for example, and plan to stay in a hotel, that, will, that won't be necessary because you will have a, a hotel reservation, for example. Or if you're coming on a planned trip, the company that is managing that will already be dealing with all these paperwork. But 
if you're planning to visit uh, a family member at their home then yes you might be asked to present that although we don't have any real case that has told us yes i was asked that so we're a bit cautious on whether to recommend this or not yet Sabera san asks can i still buy a spanish car and get insurance if i still have my uk, UK driving license but will of course retake my driving test in spain asap well, that's a tricky question. I'm I'm not sure I can give you the answer. Um, I know that uh, depending on from where your license is, you might have some troubles getting an insurance or not. So my cautious answer is wait till you get your Spanish license before you do something like purchasing a car. Um, in any case, I'm sure that there are probably uh, uh, websites or places that are more informed than me on this concrete matter. Um, so yeah, feel free to, to check other sources rather than me. I'm mostly focused on residency, healthcare access, some important, some miscellaneous here and there, but <laughs> sadly I'm, I don't have a definite answer for your question in this one. Um, another question, another question that was sent to us, um, is the following. Um, I am a UK citizen with residence in Spain. I am personally a TA holder myself. Can anyone clarify if I am currently entitled to travel to UK to visit family? My daughter holds both Spanish and British passport. My partner is Spanish. The rules are very confusing on both ends. Yes, indeed, they are not easy uh, to read uh, at all. But in this case, if you're a resident, if you're resident in Spain, you should be able to visit uh, your family in the UK uh, whenever you want, and then you should be able to come back to Spain just presenting your residency permit. Um, the only thing is, of course, when you travel to the UK, given that now it's outside the European Union, and keeping in mind all the COVID uh, restrictions that are in place, make sure that you fulfill all the criteria to do a safe trip. I believe one of the requirements is to do some quarantine in, in the UK. Um, so uh, keep all that in mind. There is also some travel forms that you will need to complete. Anyway, for anything regarding travel advice, uh, visit the gov.uk um, uh, website because they have an excellent amount of information that is, is quite comprehensive so probably there you can find the answer to your questions. Another question that was sent is can I use the IHIC to apply for residency? Well that's an absolute no. Um, sadly the European Health Insurance Card by the way it's not anymore a thing now it's the Global Health Insurance Card it's the new one that you can obtain from the UK. Um, this is a card mostly focused for touristic visits, for temporary stays, stays in EU countries. If you want to apply for residency, you will need to provide or a private health insurance, or in case you are entitled to the withdrawal agreement, you're under the scope of it, and you were working in Spain, you can present your employment contract uh, proving that you're paying into the social security, um, that will also suffice. Um, present also a subscription to the Convenio Especial, uh, which is the, the Spanish public health care system. If you lived for more than a year in Spain already, you can also present that. There are several ways you can access uh, residency with different uh, healthcare covers, but the EHIC is definitely not one of them. So you can send us an inquiry if you want, and we will be glad to show you all the options available. Oh, Ka Carol, um, so the IHIC is basically for temporary stays. Why? Because if you have a serious um, injury, let's say, and you only have an IHIC, the IHIC does not cover uh, all the cost of a lot of treatments. Um, it's very limited in many aspects and definitely not equivalent to the Spanish social security cover. So yes, when asking for residency, you need a full 
coverage from a private insurer, from the social security if you're working, from the Convenio Especial, uh, or from the S1 form if you're a pensioner, you can export your healthcare coverage from the UK to Spain and get the equivalent here. So in that case, no need to pay for a private insurance. Carol Beer uh, is asking, I have registered at my local medical center. I have been assigned a male doctor who doesn't speak any English. Can I get this changed to a female who speaks English? I have been told that there is one at this medical center. Thanks. Um, I believe yes. I believe um, you will have to, of course, go to that medical center and uh, filling a formal request for the change. I mean, it's it's a very justified reason, so I don't see why they would give you any problems with that. Um, if they give you any problems, you can contact us and we can try to assist you in the process. Call them, see what's going on. Okay. All right. Um, another question that was sent to us is, I have been stuck in the UK because of the coronavirus, but have temporary residency in Spain. I have been getting access to the Spanish health service through my IHIC, which expires in June. How can I continue to get access to this service when I get back to Spain? I need a monthly anticoagulant test. Okay, so this case is strange because you got your residency without uh, with your IHIC, I assume. Um, anyway, uh, if you come to Spain anytime soon, um, you will need to update that section and uh, probably do the T exchange as well. Um, you will need or a private insurance or if you're a pensioner, export your healthcare from the UK with the S1 and you should be completely fine. Um, if you're a pensioner in general, and that goes for everyone, the S1 is probably the, the best way to go because the healthcare department has confirmed that even though you export your UK healthcare to Spain, you can still get healthcare cover back in the UK by just presenting your S1 form at the hospital. So um, if there is someone with uh, that worry, please don't be drink a bit of water. I'm happy the, the information was helpful, Carol. Uh, feel free to ask anything else. I will, in the meantime, go to other questions that were sent to us beforehand. Okay, here's one that says, how can I check the status of my outstanding residency application? My lawyer submitted it in December and says no news, but I would like to check myself. Okay. So in this case, um, to check the, the state of your uh, residency application, you will need at least a document called Recibo de Presentación de Solicitud. Basically, when you present all your documents, I assume that your lawyer present them online with his digital certificate, his or her. Um, he will have a document with a serial number called Número de Expediente. With that numero de expediente, you can go to the Sede Electronica site and check the status of your residency application. We have uh, the links in our guides back in, in our website, in the TA guide. Uh, you will see that there's a link that says you can check the status of your residency application here. If you want us to send that, the link directly, you can just uh, send us a message and we will gladly send you the, an email back with the link. But yeah, you need that number and then they will ask you as well the date of presentation and your year of birth. And with that, you can check the status of your residency application. Keep in mind that now residency applications are taking a long time. However, uh, if, you've sent, if you have sent that during December, it should, coming, it should be coming up soon, the resolution. It's, it's a bit strange that you still haven't got one. But anyway, anything can happen given the the reality that we find ourselves in with uh, COVID and Brexit and everything. Um, Sabira, San, I guess you continue from the questions before. So if I only have 
private health care for now, how do I get a medic of the familia? Or will I just make an appointment with a private GP via my sanitas? Exactly. Yes, if you have a private insurance, um, that's how you do it. Um, you just book an appointment with a hospital that works with the insurance company. So probably the the best thing you can do to start is to give, to make an informational call with your insurance to see what are the centers that are closer from where you live that also collaborate with that insurance company and then ask for general care what you need to do to whom you need to call uh yeah in ca in case you all have public coverage uh yeah you have your gp and then you have uh, your cap as we say in some places primary care center and and you're assigned a doctor but if you have private insurance probably the best thing to do is to just inform yourself uh, via telephone with them or send them an inquiry Okay, let's see other questions that were sent. Hi, I can attend unfortunately the event as I'm working, but I have a question that you may be able to help with. Our two children were born here, both parents British and have UK passports. If we applied for a Spanish citizenship for them to potentially help them study and work in the EU, could they still keep their UK passports for use outside of Spain or do they have to relinquish them? Many thanks. Okay, um, regarding citizenship, it's not something that we usually cover, but um, while getting the Spanish citizenship nationality requires you to um, swear to refuse to your other nationalities, it is not an official process, it's just a formality. So you would, you and your children, uh, if you will apply for the Spanish nationality, would be able to keep your passports even after getting the Spanish one. Francesca Willy uh, sends us a message telling, I was just checking my residency status. Just click this link. Oh, perfect. Thank you for helping. Uh, <laughs> so yes. Um, to whoever was asking how to check, here you have the link. Um, checking that it works. Yes, it works. You can use or your knee if you had one, or you can click in the link that there is above that says that if you don't know your knee, you can also consult the status of your residence application using your numero de expediente. But for that, you will need that number from the recibo de presentación. So your lawyer will have to send you that document. Another question from Carol. Um, I'm not sure if I can ask this one. I had my first COVID vaccine in the UK. Can I get my second one in Spain? Well, this is tricky. This is tricky. Um, we're definitely not equipped to, to answer this one. But uh, my guess is that um, usually when a treatment it has two phases like this one. It is very important uh, that there is some continuity with the doctor you're dealing with. Definitely, I would the first thing to do is to ask uh, the institution that manages manages vaccination in the UK so they can provide you with the details because you know that there is, there are different brands of vaccines, and I don't know what interactions have between each other. I'm not a doctor. Uh, so yeah i wouldn't want to give you uh, an advice that is not adequate so uh, the best thing i can do is to sign post you to the proper place uh, sorry for that one carol <laughs> okay one question that we received very short but i hope i can um, develop it a bit is can you explain the resident card for family members okay um, by that I assume they mean that the person that sent this question meant TA for family members that might be coming after Brexit so for example let's say that you are a resident in Spain you are a UK national you did everything you had to do you got your TA back in 2020 or even in 2021 and now let's say that you have 
children that are coming to live to Spain in 2021. If the relationship with a family member is vertical, which means if they are your parents or your children, they are under the scope of the withdrawal agreement and because of you being a resident, they can also request a residency card even in 2021 and get their TA, their UK specific TA without further problems. You will probably just need to provide the sufficient means uh, as a parent, as well as a birth certificate that proves the relationship that you have with them. And uh, the application should be quite straightforward, really. I don't think there, there are there is much problem with that. A different thing is if, if we're talking about, for example, a brother, which is not a vertical relationship, but a horizontal one. In this case, they are not covered by the withdrawal agreement and the situation is a bit more complicated. They will probably have to request a visa of some kind, depending on what they are planning to do in Spain, to work, to retire. Uh, there are different visa regimes for that. So yeah, probably you can visit our website. We have guides on some of them. Uh, maybe you can find the one that adapts to your situation. Now, if this question is for a family member that let's say is not part of the UK or the EU, it's from another third country national, for example, Brazil. In this case, um, the person should apply for a card which is a TA of a family member of a UK national. <laughs> and this is done with a different form than the normal TA, the EX21. Okay, so if a UK national who is a resident is married with a third country national, outside from the EU and not from the UK as well, you will ha they will have to apply for this UK family member card with the EX21 form. This goes the same for people who uh, lived with their UK partner in Spain and had an EU family card before Brexit. So um, now that UK member has to get the new tier because the green card for now is valid, but anyway, they are not anymore EU members, EU nationals, and therefore the family member is also not an EU family member. It is a UK family member and they will have to renovate their EU family card for the UK family card through this EX21 form. I know there are a lot of names of forms and it's a bit complicated. So again, um, if any of you have further questions, like feel free to send us an email. We are answering every single of them with information uh, pinpoint to what you need. Um, we're not just sending general uh, message. Uh, we have a team of volunteers that is very passionate and we encourage you to contact us personally because we want to give you that information firsthand. Whether is it a call, if you feel more comfortable with a phone call or through an inquiry form, email, okay? Sabira has another question. Sorry, one more question. Don't be sorry, Sabira, we're here for that. Uh, Public health pension, uh, sorry, another question appeared. So uh, one more question. Public health, Salud Pública access. What if I paid into the Spanish Seguridad Social years ago when I worked in Spain, 1996, 2001, five years. I worked in a public sector role in Spain, MS, MEC, and a private British school. Do I still have to have a current job role in Spain and pay into the social system? or wait a year and pay via the health convenio. It's because I will be working in my UK job for a few months until I get a job in Spain. Okay, so um, I believe, Savira, that there is a threshold before you can be entitled uh, to social security, to a pension in Spain. Um, if you worked from 1996 to 2001, during that time, you were entitled to state healthcare, okay? Um, but probably now you aren't anymore unless you get a new employment contract. Um, if you're not planning to work anytime soon in Spain, which by the way now is more difficult because you would need a work permit, therefore a working visa, um, my recommendation would be go for the Convenio Especial after one year of continued residency, which means not having an official residency card but 
also, but if you're just empadronada for one year or more, you, you are eligible to that convenio. And then I believe the fees are for of 60 euros per month for people under 65 and 157 euros for people over 50, 65 years old um, for this convenio special. So maybe it's worth checking a private insurance, what's more worth, the convenio or that. Um, and yeah. And another thing that I missed before is that uh, whenever you obtain your permanent residency, you're automatically entitled to state healthcare in Spain. So you don't need anymore to justify it with contributing through your employment or with a convenio special. You will be entitled as a permanent resident, but you can only obtain that after five years of continued residency with a temporary permit. And we are now seeing some situations where TS are being issued with the counter reset back to zero after three years with the green card. People are being a bit upset. So uh, my recommendation is if you're planning to get your permanent residence anytime soon, remember to bring a copy of your former green card just in case. So none of your previous years lived in Spain are lost when because they count towards your permanent residency. OK. Carol Webster, another question. Um, it seems unreasonable for UK pensioners in UK applying for their visa to be expected to obtain a private health insurance with no exception, exemptions. Most people of that age have some pre-existing medical issues. Is this no exemption info available in writing on Spanish government embassy website? website? What, I, what I have seen doesn't mention no exemptions. Thank you. Sadly, yes, they do not uh, develop uh, their uh, their information requirements. They say you need to have a cover which is equivalent to the Spanish one. And they stop there and they leave everything else for you to figure out. Now, if you're a pensioner planning to visit Spain, one of the things you can do is use an S1 form to justify your healthcare cover. Um, that's one thing. So in this case, if you're a pensioner and you uh, financial, you have a financially delicate situation or that cannot afford a private insurance, that's definitely the way to go. Um, send us a message in private and we will tell you all the details because I don't know if you're aware of this, but you can only request an S1 form um, two weeks before traveling. So there is a special process to do that with the visa form, uh, with the visa request, because as you know, the visa should be requested with months in advance. It's not an immediate process and it needs approval, etc., etc. So there is a, a specific process for that and we can definitely let you know about how it works. But yes, if you're a pensioner and you need, you want to request a non-lucrative visa, for example, to, re to retire in Spain, you can justify your health coverage with the S1 form and the UK healthcare coverage. So no problems on that. Sabira has another, uh, well, I guess you're adding on to your previous uh, question with some context. I am working remotely in Spain and have Spanish residency and will get a job soon in a private school in Madrid as soon as my job contract finishes in the UK. That's great then. Uh, if you're a resident, you have the right to work. And as soon as you get your job in that school in Madrid, you will be paying into the social security system and therefore be entitled to public health. So you won't need any private insurance or convenio special or anything. You will be paying into the system through your taxes. So uh, that's a pretty good position to be in, at least. Um, I, we, lately in Age in Spain, we're receiving a lot of inquiries of people that sadly, um, for one reason or another, that's probably the least important of things, were unable to apply uh, back in 2020 when the requirements were just the list of documents and pretty much that's it. Nobody was asking additional questions. Now people is asking additional, well, the extranjería, not people, is asking additional questions. And that's when things get complicated, when the health insurance has to be dated 
from the time you started residency, otherwise they deem your stay unlawful and therefore you're not entitled. And yeah, now we have some delicate cases um, that we try to assist us as good as we can. But it's important that this knowledge gets out there so people that hasn't yet started can at least present a set of documents to Strangeria that makes sense in terms of their current uh, criteria. <clears throat> If you excuse me, I will drink a bit of water. Wow, we reached the 45 uh, minute mark and uh, the time went flying. <laughs> I don't know for you. Um, let's see if we have some other questions coming in. Um, mm, let's see. Yes, I think we're done with the questions that were sent to us uh, prior to the event. And it seems that um, from the viewers that we currently have, we are done. Oh, wait, look, Jerry Baileys is asking one more. Thank you, Jerry. Um, a little off message question. I tried to change my driving license, filled in all the documentation mid-December and left it to my assessor and he then fell ill and entered hospital. That's being unlucky. And it didn't get presented. None of this is his fault, but I am now out of time. Any suggestions? Most welcome. Well, that's problematic, Jerry, because um, you could change your driving license back in 2020 without the test. The, what was happening back then is that there weren't appointments. Um, you, literally, you tried to book an appointment uh, for your exchange and they were giving you an appointment for February 2021. And theoretically, in, in, in February, it was already, you were already needing a test, right, to do the exchange. So that's why they enabled that process of requesting the exchange. So if you requested the exchange in 2020, you, even though when the appointment would be in 2021, you wouldn't need to do the driving test. Now, if your assessor didn't do that, or you didn't do that, but I guess you had your confidence on the assessor, if that process didn't happen, for now, again, this may change any minute now, because the deadline for the general UK driving license being able to get you be used in Spain is June 30th. At any minute, we might get a different news, but for the time being, you have to do a driving test to proceed with the exchange. That's all I can I can tell. Um, if we know about any updates, we will for sure promote it through our Facebook page, Twitter, our inquiries, uh, forums, uh, residency helpline, everything, because there is many, there is a lot of people that is in the exact same situation as you, Jerry. I'm sorry to not provide with a resolution on this case, but it is currently the, the answer. Sharon is, um, uh, want to send a clarification. Once you have your permanent residence, can you always access the social security healthcare? Many things. The answer is yes, Sharon. Uh, once you have your permanent residence, which is valid for up to 10 years, you can indeed register with your local cap with your social security you will be issued a medical card and you can apply uh, you can go to a doctor whenever you need to so that's being a permanent resident if you're a temporary one this assistance is subject to your contribution as a, as an employed person as a person that is paying into the convenio special etc 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 okay so i think that uh, with this question we will close the event thank you very very much for assisting it was very nice to answer your question and i hope that at least we could shed some light onto some of the hot topics of the residency process right now um but yes um any other questions that you may have, feel free to send them through via email, via our enquiry forums, via our Facebook message even. 
Uh, we also respond that, although we redirect the conversation to the email in, because of um, GDPR <laughs> reasons, most of it. But yes, we will continue to work uh, for you guys. And uh, any other questions, just come to us. We will announce future events in person shortly that our regional coordinators will be celebrating all around Spain. So stay tuned for that as well. Thank you for coming and have a nice evening, guys. Bye.